Welcome back to Sunday's Catechism class. So before we begin the class, let us pray for love the cross. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Father. Heavenly Father, we are here for your children. Bless each and every one of us with your spirit of wisdom and understanding. We can experience your love through this class and understand your love, especially the washing of your feet. That you have washed our sins through your precious blood. Bless each one of us as we make the sign of the cross. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. So, dear students, we have lesson four the true sign of a disciple of Jesus. Yes. The true sign of the disciples of Jesus is seen in the life of St. Mother Teresa. Lovingly we call her Mother Teresa. Yes, she says, In this love does not measure, it just gives. And you can see through her life that she was able to give Jesus to the hungry, to the needy. Sick, whoever came across in her life. And love is the center of our life. Love is a people in season, all times, and within each of them. Yes, it does not get tired or weary, it just gives. And then she says, I have found the paradox that the real love. Until it hurts, there can be no more hurt or be more love. The students, let's watch a video and let's come back after watching it. Let us listen. Jesus knew that the Father had given him complete power. He knew that he had come from God and was going to God. So he rose from the table, took off his outer garment, and tied a towel round his waist. Then he poured some water into a wash basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with the towel around his waist. He came to Simon Peter. Are you going to wash my feet, Lord? You do not understand now what I am doing, but you will understand later. Never at any time will you wash my feet. If I do not wash your feet, you will no longer be my disciple. Lord, do not wash only my feet then. Wash my hands and head too. <laughs> Those who have taken a bath are completely clean and do not need to wash themselves, except for their feet. All of you are clean. All except one. After Jesus had washed their feet, he put his outer garment back on and returned to his place at the table. Do you understand what I've just done to you? 
You call me teacher and lord. And it is right that you should do so, because that is what I am. I, your lord and teacher, have just washed your feet. You then should wash one another's feet. I have set an example for you. So that you will do just what I have done for you. I am telling you the truth. No slaves are greater than their master, and no messengers are greater than the one who sent them. Let us listen to the word of God taken from the Gospel of St. John, chapter 13, verses 1 to 15. Now, before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and wipe them with the towel that was tied about him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you understand what I have done to you? You call me teacher and lord. And you are right, for that is what I am. So, if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example, that you also should do as I have done to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to Lord Jesus Christ. As Christians, we can apply to our lives the gift of salvation. When we come to Christ for the washing of our sins, we can be sure that it is permanent and complete. We can trust in the mercy of the Lord that Jesus forgives our sins. We need continual cleansing of our sins by the power of the Holy Spirit who lives within us and the power of the Word of God through sacrament of reconciliation, we do experience the forgiveness of the Lord, the washing of our sins. Jesus, Son of God, came to serve and not to be served. Therefore, the true greatness in His kingdom is attained by those with a servant's heart. When we had that servant's heart, the Lord promised we will be greatly blessed. Therefore, let us seek for the heavenly award, the heavenly blessings which we can receive as we serve the others with much love. So, let us revise the lesson and 
draw messages from this lesson. Jesus washing the feet of the disciples occurred in the upper room during the Last Supper and has significance in three ways. For Jesus, it was the display of his humility and his servanthood. For the disciples, the washing of their feet was in direct contrast to their heart attitudes at that time. For us, washing feet is symbolic of our role in the body of Christ. Walking in sandals on the filthy roads of Israel in the first century made it imperative that feet be washed before a communal meal, especially since people reclined at a low table and feet were very much in evidence. When Jesus rose from the table and began to wash the feet of the disciples, he was doing the work of the lowliest of servants. The disciples must have been stunned at this act of humility and condescension, that Christ, their Lord and Master, should wash the feet of his disciples, when it was their proper work to have washed his. But when Jesus came to earth the first time, he came not as a king and conqueror, but as the suffering servant of Isaiah 53. As he revealed in Matthew 20:28, 20, he came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. The humility expressed by his act with towel and basin foreshadowed his ultimate act of humility and love on the cross. Jesus' attitude of servanthood was in direct contrast to that of the disciples, who had recently been arguing among themselves as to which of them was the greatest. Since there was no servant present to wash their feet, it would never have occurred to them to wash one another's feet. When the Lord himself stooped to this lowly task, they were stunned into silence. To his credit, though, Peter was profoundly uncomfortable with the Lord washing his feet, and, never being at a loss for words, Peter protested, You shall never wash my feet. Then Jesus said something that must have further shocked Peter. Unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Prompting Peter, whose love for the Savior was genuine, to request a complete washing. Then Jesus explained the true meaning of being washed by him. Peter had experienced the cleansing of salvation, and did not need to be washed again in the spiritual sense. Salvation is a one-time act of justification by faith, but the lifelong process of sanctification is one of washing from the stain of sin we experience as we walk through the world. Peter and the disciples, all except Judas, who never belonged to Christ, needed only this temporal cleansing. This truth is just one of several from this incident that Christians can apply to their own lives. First, when we come to Christ for the washing of our sins, we can be sure that it's permanent and complete. No act can cleanse us further from our sin, as our sin has been exchanged for the perfect righteousness of Christ on the cross. But we do need continual cleansing from the effects of living in the flesh in a sin-cursed world. The continual washing of sanctification is done by the power of the Holy Spirit who lives within us, through the washing of water by the Word, given to us to equip us for every good work. Further, when Jesus washed the disciples' feet, he told them, and us, I have given you an example, that you should do as I have done to you. As his followers, we are to emulate him, serving one another in lowliness of heart and mind, seeking to build one another up in humility and love. When we seek the preeminence, we displease the Lord, who promised that true greatness in his kingdom is attained by those with a servant's heart. When we have the servant's heart, the Lord promised we will be greatly blessed. So, here you have some of the homeworks to be done. In the first question, you are to find the words on the list that are hidden in the puzzle. The words can be left to right, up and down, or diagonally. In the second question, you are to begin at the number one dot and draw a line to the next number dots until you reach the number one dot again to complete the picture. In question three, you are to find the secret code. Each number stands for a letter of the alphabet. So, write the correct letter in the blank to find the coded words and phrase. So, each chord that has its key in the number, you will find a sentence. In question 4, you are to find the hidden objects in the picture that is there. And in question 5, write any four points how you would like to practice 
the acts of charity. This is more of practical living. So dear students, as we conclude our class, let us thank God for the blessings of this day, for the good things we learned, especially that of Jesus' love for us. And as we conclude this class, let us pray our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So thank you dear students, and have a blessed Sunday. May God bless you. Thank you.